हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी डू सब्सक्राइब इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी इफ़ यू हैवन डन इट येट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम विच सीज दैट अ टू पाउंड ब्लॉक रेस्ट्स ऑन द स्मूथ सीमी सिलेंड्रिकल सरफेस एट ए एन इलास्टिक कार्ड हैविंग स्टिफनेस ऑफ टू पाउंड पर फीट इज अटीज टू द ब्लॉक एट बी एंड टू द बेस ऑफ द सीमी सिलेंडर एट सी If the block is released from rest when theta equals to zero, when this theta equals to zero, the block is at A, and at that particular instant, the velocity of the block is, the velocity of the block at A, is zero. It is at rest. Uh, so it is said that determine the longest unstretched length of the cord, so that the block begins to leave the semi cylinder at the instant when theta equals to forty five. So let's say that when the block is at b, theta is equal to forty-five degrees, and at that particular instant the block leaves the surface. It is said that neglect the size of the block. So let's say that the unstretched length of the spring is let's say x. So we we want to find the unstretched length of the spring, which is x. So that is to be determined. Now, now we can apply the law of conservation of energy which says that the kinetic energy at point a the initial state of the block plus the potential energies at a that will be equal to the kinetic energies at b plus the potential energies at point b so for gravitational potential energy we have to define our datum line our reference line so this the surface is our datum line here the gravitational potential energy will be equal to 0 so now uh, this will be we can we can split this potential energy into two components so that is ta and we have two types of potential energies one is the gravitational potential energy at a and one is the elastic potential energy due to the cord and due to the stretchness in the cord so that is the elastic potential energy at a Similarly, at B we will have the kinetic energy at point B plus the gravitational potential energy at point B plus the elastic potential energy at point B. Now, since at A the block is at rest, so the kinetic the velocity is zero, so the kinetic energy is zero. Similarly, at A the block is on the datum line, so when the block is on the datum line, the gravitational potential energy is zero as well. so we are only left with <coughs> the elastic potential energy at a so the elastic potential energy at a will be equal to 1 divided by 2 k and the stretchness in the cord change in length of the cord at a square so then this will be equal to tb so the kinetic energy at point b that will be equal to 1 divided by 2 and mass so the weight is 2 so mass will be 2 divided by g value which is 32.2 feet per second square into vb square so let's say the velocity of the block at point b is vb plus now the gravitational potential energy so the gravitational potential energy that is always equal to uh weight times the height from the datum line so that is the gravitational potential energy at b so the height from the datum line this will be the height from the datum line This is h, and this will be equal to since the radius is one point five feet, and at b the angle is forty five, so then the h will be one point five sine of forty five degrees. So this will be now the weight is two pounds, so this will be two multiplied by one point five sine of forty five degrees. So we can find it that is two multiplied by one point five sine of forty five. This gives us the gravitational potential energy at b, which is two point one two. So this is two point one two. So I will write here as two point one two plus the elastic potential energy at B. So the elastic potential energy at B will be one divided by two k and delta x B square. And now we know the k value is given. K value is two. So if I replace this k by two, and similarly I can replace this k value by two. so this will cancel out and this will cancel out so we will be left with this equation we will be left with with the equation like this now now we we want to we want to represent this delta x a in terms of that unstretched length so as we know that the change in length is always equal to the stretch length minus 
the delta x will always be equal to the stretch length minus the original length or the unstretched length. So let's say that delta x e. So the stretch length at e. So the chord will be stretched from c to e and that length will be equal to the half of the circumference of the circle or we can find that stretchness lsa the stretch length at a by applying s is equal to r theta equation so this will be equal to r theta so now uh, the r is 1.5 and complete angle this complete angle is 180 degrees and in radian it is pi so that is 1.5 pi so the stretch length when the block is at a the stretch length is 1.5 pi so we can say that change in x a that is 1.5 pi minus x so this is that delta x a so now i can put it here this equation we can write that equation like this that will be uh, 1.5 pi minus x squared and here this two can we cancel out as well so we will be left with vb square divided by 32.2 plus 2.12 plus delta xb so again delta xb will be delta xb will be equal to the stretch length at b minus the unstretched length so now the stretch length at, at b will be equal to again we can apply the s is equal to r theta formula the stretch length at b will be r theta and now the theta is this angle so this angle is 180 minus 45 this is 135 degrees so we need to convert this 135 degrees into radians so as we know that one uh, 360 degrees is 360 degrees is 2 pi radians and 1 degree is we can write that 1 degree is 2 pi divided by 360. So to convert this 135, we have to multiply it by 2 pi by 360. So 135 degree angle, let me write it here, 135 multiplied by 2 pi divided by 360. This gives us 3 divided by 4 pi. So 3 divided by 4 pi. Now I can put that here. This is r is 1.5 again and theta is 3 divided by 4 pi. So that is, let me confirm that 135 multiplied by 2 uh, pi divided by 360. This gives us 3 divided by 4 pi. And now 3 divided by 4 pi multiplied by 1.5. So that is 9 divided by 8 pi. So this is 9 divided by 8 pi. Let me write it like this. This is 9 divided by 8 pi. So this is the stretch length at B. So this is delta x B square. We can write that this is 9 divided by 8 pi minus x whole square so now in this equation we have uh, two unknowns vb is not known and x is not known x is to be determined and in this equation we need to know vb so first of all i will rearrange this equation in terms of x and then i will find vb so if I apply a minus b square formula, then that will be one, this will give us 1.5 pi square plus x square minus 2 into 1.5 pi into x. And that will be equal to b square divided by 32.2 plus 2.12. And then this will be 9 divided by 8 pi square plus x square minus 2 into 9 divided by 8 pi into x. So if we simplify this, this is 1.5 square pi, uh, 1.5 pi square, this is 22.21. Plus x square, then this minus 2 into 1.5, so this is 3 pi. So 3 multiply by pi, this gives us 9.42 minus 9.42x, and this will be Vb square divided by 32.2 plus 2.12, and then this will be 9 divided by 8 pi square. 
9 divided by 8 square this gives me 12.49 plus x square minus this is uh, 2 into 9 divided by 8 into pi so this gives us 7.07 7 x 7.07 7 x now i will bring all these to the other side of equation so that is we can write it as x square and we can cancel out this x square on both sides of the equation if i bring this x square to the other side so it will become negative and it will cancel out so we will be left with uh, minus 9.42 x then we will have uh, this this x on the other side of the equation it will become positive so that will be plus 7.07 .07 x then 22.21 minus this 2.12 minus 12.49 and this will be equal to b squared divided by 32.2 so now we will add up we will sum up all of these and we can add up both of these so that is minus 9.42 plus 7.07 .07. so this is minus 2.35 x and this is plus 22.21 minus 2.12 minus 12.49 this gives us 7.6 so this is plus 7.6 equals to vb square divided by 32.2 and if i bring this 7.6 to the other side so we will be able to find that x value that is the unstretched length of that chord so let's say this is our equation one now when the block is at b in the problem statement is said that it will leave the surface it will leave the semi cylinder when theta is equal to 45 degrees so now if we consider the normal and tangential coordinates if i consider the normal so the normal axis will be acting towards the center and the tangential axis will be going in this direction so its weight will be acting vertically downward its weight will be acting like this this is two pounds and the surface will apply the normal force like this so this will be the normal force and if this if we extend the line of action of this weight it is perpendicular with this surface and this tangential axis is, is perpendicular with the normal axis so the angle between both of these is 45 so this angle is also 45 degrees now we can resolve this weight into its components we will have two components the weight will have one component in this direction like this and it will have one component like this so this will be uh, if, if this is 45 degrees then this will be this is two pound weight so this will be two sine of 45 degrees so now if i apply the summation of forces along the normal direction if i apply the kinetics the summation of forces along the normal direction it will be equal to the velocity at b square divided by rho that will be the summation of forces along n will be equal to m a n and we know that a n is you can write that this is v b square divided by rho so if i if we look into this so n is acting in the negative n so i will write minus n and then this sine comes is acting in the positive end direction so i will write plus 2 sine of 45 degrees and this will be equal to the mass so mass is 2 divided by 32.2 and into vb square divided by that rho value rho is the radius of the curvature now the radius of the curvature is fixed here which is the radius that is 1.5 feet so we can write it like this now if i write 32.2 here this is 32.2 and 1.5 here and at the instant when the block leaves the surface n will be equal to zero so n is equal to zero and we are left with this equation the equation is like this now if i multiply both sides of equation by 1.5 divide 1.5 if I multiply both sides of equation by 1.5, so it will cancel out. So we will have 1.5 into 2 
sine of 45 degrees equal to 2 vb square divided by 32.2 and similarly if i divide both sides of equation by 2 so this 2 will cancel out so this will be vb square divided by 32.2 in this equation we we want to find this value so vb square divided by 32.2 is equal to this we can find it this 2 will cancel out so that will be equal to 1.5 sine of 45 1.5 sine of 45 this gives us 1.06 this is equal to 1.06 we b square divided by 32.2 is 1.06 now if i put it in this equation 1 so we have minus 2.2 35x plus 7.6 that is equal to this whole thing is equal to 1.06 and if I bring this 7.6 to the other side of equation so it will become negative and if I find this this is 1.06 minus 7.6 this is minus 6.54 minus 6.54 minus will cancel out and x the unstretched length of the chord will be 6.4 divided by 2.35 so 6.4 divided by 2.35 this is 2.72 so x is equal to 2.72 and this will be in feet Now, if in the problem statement, if we were required to determine the velocity at B, so we can find the velocity at B. From this equation, the velocity at B square will be equal to 1.06 into 32.2. And if I take the square root, that will give us the velocity at B. So that is square root 1.06 into 32.2. This gives us 5.84 feet per second so this is the velocity at b and this is the unstretched length of the card which was required in this problem so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope this will help you in your learning do subscribe engineers academy for the solution of such more problems from hibler dynamics